and welcome to the incredibly beautiful west coast of France which we are using as our starting point for our drive down to Le Mans. Now of course we got here somehow, we drove down from the UK yesterday in a convoy of classic and new Aston Martins to this point today. The idea is that Aston have brought almost their full spectrum of historic cars and modern day cars. We've got everything from DB4 all the way up to the new Vantage which I have been the long term keeper of over the last few months. Speaking of which, this is also somewhat of a poignant and sad day because it is my last road trip with the Vantage. Shortly after this trip the Vantage goes back to Aston and I shall cry a little China grey shaded tear. It's been unbelievable but today we're going to round up what it's been like living with that car and I think the most fitting of scenarios is to drive it into Le Mans with the Aston Historic Convoy. So without further ado, let's hop in the Vantage and do this. For me are a little bit confusing which is actually where this car sits now i know from the outset clearly aston are marketing this as a sports car and once you've spent some time with it it does have sports car traits obviously but for me where it's a little bit confusing which is an element as to why i think this is now aston's best car is the fact that it is as good if not a better gt than their db11 now hear me out on why i think this is so the db11 has back seats okay but they are so small that i really don't think anyone's going to really use them and if you are they're never going to be for any length of time fine if you have small children but it's the kind of seat arrangement that would lend itself well on a short journey to take maybe some friends or family to the pub you definitely wouldn't have them join you on your grand tour so as a result on this sports car platform Aston have removed the rear seats in the Vantage and the boot is therefore colossal now on a Grand Tourer platform that's what you want you want you and the family or you and the wife or whoever is joining you to be able to effortlessly take a week's worth of luggage and clothing without batting an eyelid that is by definition a Grand Tourer this car having spent uh, just over two months with it does it way better than the DB11 which is why I'm like where does this car sit because on the one hand Aston are marketing it and positioning it as their sports car but when you live with it it has a much more of a GT feel about it the other thing is the fact that it doesn't have a twin clutch gearbox now for those of you guys who watch this channel regularly I know I go on about this all the time I'm not talking about this now because it's a problem I'm talking about this now because it is a defining characteristic as to how a car feels when you drive it now the DB11 which is clearly Aston's Grand Tourer also has a more conventional 8-speed automatic gearbox which this car also has yet Aston positioned this car as their sports car now if you look at the market generally and the other sports cars which are in this bracket and with options I think the average Vantage is coming in at around about 150 grand you're looking at things like 911 GTS or potentially 911 GT3 McLaren 570S and 570GT uh, Audi R8 even AMG GT which this car shares the same engine from all of these cars are very much defined as sports cars and therefore all have 
very razor sharp twin clutch gearboxes. The interesting thing is, this car is positioned as Aston sports car. When you get in this car and you realize that Aston sports car still has a conventional eight speed auto, there's something about that that, that does detract from it being a more pure sports car. I'm not saying that that's right or wrong. In fact, I'm impressed that Aston have brought something to the sports car market that does offer something different because in this day and age, that's quite hard. But equally, you approach this first and foremost before you've ever driven it as a sports car. And I don't think it is as sporty as you guys might think. Once you're in it, this thing crunches miles wonderfully. What this thing does now do is blur those lines between sports car and GT car so much that it is such a complete package that you could daily this thing no problem in fact it would be a joy and then when you do eventually reach that wonderful driving road you just want to give it maximum attack this thing suits that it's your perfect daily driver but then when you want to it can switch into a bit of an animal nothing crazy but just a nice sophisticated grunty daily and for that i think aston have done a really good job of setting themselves apart from the rest of the sports car pack Okay, we've just stopped for lunch. Conveniently, as we've left, the sun has come out, which means only one thing. It's time to swap to the V8 Volante. Check out the detail on this thing as well. It has open pore wood inside the car and on the inlays, like so, which I guess you would class as sort of standard procedure. However, behold the rear sculpture of the seats, also featuring this open pore wood, is absolutely stunning. Isn't that great? Okay. We're in the V8. Uh, there is, by the way, only V8 versions of the DB11 for Volante. No V12s as of yet. However, to make this occasion even more special, well, that too is also a V8 with a more conventional coupe, we're also going to be in convoy with the DB6 Volante, which James is in, and a DB4, no less. The car that James is in is valued at about one, is it one and a half million, James? One and a half million pounds. Cool. <laughs> no stress, dude. Yeah. So, needless to say, the convoy is special, and the idea is, uh, when we stop for petrol shortly, we're going to be jumping in that DB4, which I'm incredibly excited about. Lead the way, Squire. Okay. Tally her. Tally her. <laughs> what an awesome day. <laughs> and this is actually the first time that I've driven a V8 version of the DB11. My good friend and familiar face, Paul Wallace, tells me that it is one of his favorite cars. So this will be interesting. I guess with it having uh, eight less cylinders, it's obviously a lighter and I guess arguably better balanced car. We shall see. Let's get on the road in this ridiculous convoy. We also have uh, a DB6 coupe behind us as well, so yeah, there's definitely the worst afternoons. So, 3.7 litre, this is the Mark, the Mark 3. DB4, so this is the edition before they phased it out and it eventually became DB5. Uh, it has four gears, but it does have an overdrive switch. So when you're in fourth, you can flick a sort of long stick, which is just above the gear stick on the dash, which effectively simulates a fifth gear. But you have to switch that off before dropping it down to third. No power steering, then there's long before ABS or any of that. It's currently worth about a cool £800,000. So uh, let's get in and enjoy the purity. Oh, it's like millimilia all over again. Uh, one feature, or should I say lack of feature that I forgot to mention is there's no seat belts either. And also the up until late iconic fly off handbrake. Yeah, well, raw and pure, I have a feeling, isn't going to do this thing justice. Let's see if I can adjust the seat. Yeah, there we are. Heavy clutch. 
And that switch there, that's the overdrive switch that I was talking about. Anyway, everyone's rolling out, so we're gonna hop in. And roll to Le Mans in a DB4. What is life right now? Oh, there it is. Oh, oh quite a stiff throttle pedal as well. De definitely no power steering there. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's wonderfully, wonderfully simple, but even I haven't even rolled off the petrol station forecourt yet. And the thoughts are going through my mind are, I mean, this is a 50 year old steering wheel that I'm holding right now. I'm imagining all of the, oh, listen to it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, just holding this wheel, I'm imagining all of the people over the generations who have had their hands on this and where it's been. glamping destination. Uh, I've been promised big things by Aston Martin, particularly Kev who runs the show, seems to be pretty excited about things. They've been playing their cards very close to their chest, not telling us what's going on. But I can already see very posh tents in here, and it's like a stone's throw from Le Mans, so it's perfect. So we're gonna go and line up all our cars near the tents. There goes the DB6. Our original Vantage is behind us can already smell a substantial barbecue cooking. This is, this is awesome. Um, anyway, let's go check out camp. Look at this, there's a, there's a lot of tents. It's nice. There's, there's about 43 tents. 43 tents. Yeah, yeah. And on the, your left here is your, is your state of the art built up. So this is our shower area. Number one straight on your right here. Okay. And basically it's the next one along. Ideal, look at that. You've got a little welcome pack inside. You've got, you've got an itinerary letter. So this is so, my domain yeah. for Le Mans. That's right. I'm very excited about this. That's right. I can already see through the netting. We've got proper beds sorted out. Gorgeous, yes. <laughs> you've, got, you've got proper mattress, so it's... It's it's, it's all the convenience that, that you, would, you would have in a flat, almost. Look at check it out. <laughs> Wow! Look at the size of this place, this is so cool! It's awesome! Yeah, it's, it is awesome! So big inside! So here we are, inside our Uber tent. It's colossal. I mean, I knew it was going to be remotely posh, but I didn't realise they would be so big. We've got our racing guest packs. Oh, check this. How posh is that? Leather... It smells like the inside of their cars, it's incredible. So, passes for the weekend. Here we are, so this is the one, this is our glamping pass. I'm gonna need this on me when I'm on site here. This is a wristband to access 24 hours and grid walk. That's what we like to see. To get access on the grid is super exciting. And I mean, look at the presentation. They even have this tiny little clip here to keep it all in place. And I believe this is a guest for when you're in the hospitality of Aston Martin. Um, ooh, look at that, little embossing there. Couldn't go missing and something else. Super season guide, 2018-19. Yes, I forgot, it is the super season. So for those of you guys who don't know, um, Le Mans was only raced once per season, but the super season spans both 2018 and 2019. And the idea of racing Le Mans twice is that they get to finish at Le Mans. Because Le Mans, as part of the uh, WEC or World Endurance Championship, um, is the biggest race and it's been the idea of the organizers that they would always like to finish it on the biggest race so they've decided to do Le Mans twice in one season even though it crosses over two years hence super season 18-19 okay we have one more look at the goodie bags are flowing I don't know what this is this is big and it's heavy do you remember that scene in Jurassic Park, where the kid's playing with those night vision goggles, and the guy in the front's like, are they heavy? And the kid's like, yeah. He goes, then they're expensive, put them down. <laughs> Every time I pick up something that I don't know what it is, and it's heavy, I always think of that. Moment of truth, is it? Oh, wow. Look at this. Ah, oh, it's like, 
I guess, a 3D printed map of Le Mans. 24 hours of Le Mans edition 2018, Aston Martin Racing. It's stunning. Wow. That's going straight in the man cave. Anyway, I'm going to put this uh, heavy thing back in this box. But now I have to go and get accredited, and then uh, I shall probably show you around this resplendent barbecue environment.